Hello, everybody. Welcome to Khmer Post USA TV show. Today, I have the most distinct pleasure to bring you the special guest, Madame Musu Hoor, who is a well-known human rights activist advocate for Cambodia for three decades. She formerly served as a member of parliament in Cambodia from, since 1998 to, to, to 2003, then from 2013 to 2017 until the opposition party CNRP dissolved by the ruling party. She is here with me today because she has been exiled among one of the 118 opposition figure, uh, opposition party uh, figure who has been banned from doing politics for five years. She has been exiled, living in the United States for in the last several years. However, recently, uh, Prime Minister Hun Sen uh, government has been has summoned over 100 people to court who consist mostly the CNRP member, and she is here with me today because she has to decided that she will lead those people has been called summoned to court returning to Cambodia on January 4th. So let's welcome Madam Musuhu. Uh, thank you so much for giving me this honor, uh, giving me the interview uh, to our audience and the English speaking audience. Uh, Cambodia politics is very well known and the heat debate in the heart of many people, uh, but it's been done mostly in our Khmer language. And as I understand, uh, we haven't had much of English interview uh, that information out there for English speaker as well as Cambodian Americans. So thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to speak with you today and thank you for making the time. Again, welcome. Well, thank you. It is I who have to thank Khmer Post USA for giving this my situation uh, um, the time so that uh, the whole world, uh, we especially Cambodian Americans, can hear about the real situation. So the real situation here, I know as I have been following you in the last over a decade, so this would not be the first lawsuit that we see uh, Prime Minister Hun Sen government consistently used to oppress uh, opposition party. You yourself were sued by him back in 2009. And uh, uh, can you uh, be, can you tell us a little bit more what happened then? Because as I remember, uh, you file a suit that demand for apology and to pay 12 cents. Uh, However, the court was ruled that you paid $4,000 $4, instead. So um, can you explain that a little bit and how is that a pattern of lawsuit consistent systematic oppression of public, of, of the opposition party and what you see today? Well, just to start with, I just say very rightly, so uh, so when the Cambodian court is not just a tool of Mr. Hun Sen, is a weapon uh, for Mr. Hun Sen to eliminate his opponents, and not just his opponents, but um, anyone who dares stand up. And what is most tragic is that this weaponization weaponization of the justice system of Cambodia by Mr. Hun Sen uh, victimizes uh, the entire country. That has to be um, resolved. And how do we resolve? We resolve by standing up. We resolve by taking uh, our, uh, taking, uh, uh, using our rights as citizens, our human rights, um, and not live in fear. And the situation is uh, to a point where uh, I have to uh, again go back to this um, court of Mr. Hun Sen, and that's the only way I can find justice. Whether for sure we won't find justice, but is the process toward justice? I think be even before entering, you know, it's likely it will be like what happened in the last time when he tried to use his court against you. Um, why are you walking into this trap? 
It's actually not a trap, so Ben, it is, if you want to play fair, let's play fair. Let's play fair. What is um, the highest standards, universal standards for fair trial? Has to follow the, follow, uh, the uh, procedures. First, administrative procedures, which means that it, it starts with the summon. Yeah, if someone is charged, someone is, needs to go to court for a, a trial, so that person that is charged must be summoned. Yeah? I host, I, I had never received a summon for the court, from the court, and the uh, date of the trial is set for the uh, sometime in December. All I know is that this piece of paper, which is the summon, which should come from the court, was posted at the gate with the public space. And luckily, people went around and saw my name and the names of all the leaders like Mr. Sam Rang Si uh, posted on the gate of our headquarter. And it all went into onto Facebook. And that's how you know that you are being charged and very very serious charges, treason, incitement to topple the government. You know, if you find, and for sure we will be uh, convicted, and that means um, up to 30 years in prison. But how do you get out, defend yourself if not to go to that court and say, Your Honor, let me speak. Let me represent myself. Where is the truth? What evidence do you have to um, charge me? And that's procedure. And the other procedure that needs to be uh, maintained is the substance, substantive uh, procedure. Does it look, the judge, the judges have to, with their, ju their jurisprudence, how to decide whether or not those charges are well-founded. It is impossible for me, for us living outside and be charged on treason. How could we do that? This makes me calculate, calculate first of all, the CNRP party was resolved, which was unconstitutional, but to them, it's legal, which they claim. And the CNRP oversee continue to conduct uh, the work of organizing, uh, mobilizing the support and continue to try to have the opposition voice. Um, is this the ground that uh, they trying to force into, in doing so, consider as treason? Yes, of course. We have to go take a few steps back. The results of the election in 2013, tremendous gains we made as opposition. Half of the country have cho chose the CNRP meaning the vote, uh, over 3 million voters. We got more than half of the seats in parliament. That's number one. Number two, again, the same tremendous um, success we, we had at the uh, local elections in 2017. We gained again over, we covered over 43% of the votes meaning that we had over 5,000 local councillors in the whole country. Can you imagine that? Therefore, Mr. Hun Sen calculated very well how he's going to be, where he's going to be, where he would be in 2018 election, the past election. He knew very well that he himself and the Cambodian, uh, his party, would lose the 2018 elections. So the scenario is to cut off any kind of viable competition from any kind of um, prominent leaders that could challenge him at the election of 2018. 
and he succeeded. The only way he could succeed was to dissolve the party, the CNRP. And how did he dissolve the CNRP? By amending it, the laws. The law was 50 plus one. Before that, it was two thirds. It would require two thirds of member of parliament to make any major decision. And the law dropped down to 50 plus one. Uh, how do you think with this amending the new law 50 plus one have uh, taken the place that affect in, include in the ending, ending result uh, dissolving the opposition party, which has nearly at that point 50% of the voice. And this is in any country, we have never seen such uh, absolute uh, determination to dissolve a party which have nearly 50% of the voice. Um, what is your, uh, uh, what is your assessment on, on this? Well, the assessment is that it's a dictatorship. At the dictatorship, laws means nothing. Parliament, the pub parliament, uh, public inst institutions no longer exist. It's all in the hands and in the mouth of the dictator. In Khmer, we say, when men need to rate, need to moat. Need to rate is rule of law. Need to moat is ruled by your mouth, the mouth of the leader of the, the dictator. So you can argue whether it's 50 plus one, it is two thirds of the vote. So what do you can argue until you, you, you die? It's not gonna make any difference to a dictator. He maintains the facade of democracy by saying, yes, there is a national assembly. Yes, there is a Senate. Yes, there, are, there is um, the government and so on. In reality, it, it is like a tr the trial, it's mockery of justice. And in a dictatorship, it's exactly how the, today, how um, the country is running. What I couldn't understand was this, if, if all that he was doing not legal, and he, how did, were he able to ban 118 opposition party member from doing politics and banning for five years. That means from 2017 plus five years, that 2022, that not giving you an opportunity to, to running for another election that coming up, which is on 2023. So um, is this really a legal way that he really had uh, a mean to do it? Like what kind of means that allow him to do this? Because um, because apparently it's a long game. It's a stall game. Um, so what message do you uh, have to explain to the public? That is why when we were dissolved on the 16th of November, 2017, even before, when our leader, Mr. Kamsoka, who, who was um, arrested in the middle of the night, without an arrest warrant. And at that time he was a member of parliament in, with full uh, parliamentary immunity. He was still arrested. And that's why when I decided that I had to leave the country because I, was, I would have been next as vice one of the vice presidents, right? And if I had stayed or many of us, those leaders had stayed we would have been, today we would be in, in jail, we would be in Phnom Penh, in Cambodia with our mouth shut. There would have been no voice whatsoever for the CNRP, the Cambodian National Rescue Party. That is why I decided to come to leave the country then. You know how you feel about leaving a country, your own country, fleeing your own country. It's not a light decision you make, but you had to make it for the long run, how to fight from outside. Because we knew that Cambodian Americans, especially in law, thank you to thank you really uh, to all the Cambodian Americans, especially in law, a very strong base. 
for uh, CNRP and for the Cambodian community. But we knew that we would have the support of the diaspora, not just in America, but for all over the world. That's why we, in our second uh, December, uh, two years ago, we founded the CNRP overseas. And we strengthen all chapters in CNRP America, CNRP Australia, CNRP Europe, and this base from outside, with this base from outside for the past three years, we have been able to advocate, to speak for those who are inside, who are voiceless, those who are members who are in jail, who are being pursued by the Hun Sen Court every single day. So in that sense, our strategy to keep CNRP alive was a, the right strategy, the right decision to make. And it proves today that Mr. Hun Sen is very, still very, very afraid, very um, um, afraid of the CNRP because CNRP was dissolved. But in paper, but not in the hearts of the people. Yes, and um, I know that with this trip that you planning uh, return on January 4th, uh, which uh, ten, would be 10 days before the trial, um, how many people uh, are returning, uh, I guess, uh, those have been summons. How many at this point? I have to um, make it clear that we there are nine people, top leaders, who are being summoned. Yeah, those who are outside. There's some like Mr. Samrangsi. He is in in in, in France. There are others who are in France or those who are in in America. Um, we are go. We want to go back home with our Cambodian passports. As Cambodians, the, uh, uh, any citizen, you have the right to own your own, your vital, your personal document and for to travel with is your passport. Our passport, our passport were revoked by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs on the 6th November 2019 when we attempted to go back to Cambodia then. They took away our passports. Uh, yeah. Then, now we want, we recently on the 10th or 11th of November, we went to the Cambodian, Ameri Cambodian Embassy in Washington, D.C. to ask for our passport to be revalidated. We were not even allowed to go inside the embassy. Can you imagine that? It was its total violation of our constitutional right. Article 33 of the Cambodian constitution stipulates very clearly that a citizen of Cambodia shall not be um, the, the deprived of his or her own identity. Our identity is our passport as birth certificate. And as a citizen shall not be denied, shall not be expelled from Cambodia. And by not letting us go in to use the services of the, um, the, the Cambodian embassy in America, meaning that means that we, are, we have no country to represent us. So the only choice we have right now are those who have dual citizenship like me, yeah, an American citizen, and Mr. Nut from Dual, who is in law, also an American citizen, will go with me, and that others from France will go with me. Yeah. How is this uh, trip will be different than last time when Mr. Sam Ramsey tried to return? And as we uh, saw, many countries were not able to get, provide him the pathway. How this time around will be different? Have you gotten that logistic figure it out? Well, that's, this time, there are two things that are different. Number one, we have a trial. A, a, a trial that is set. 
Yeah. So Mr. Hun Sen cannot. Last time we did not have the trial. We were not summoned. Yeah. So this time we are summoned. Therefore, if Mr. Hun Sen wants to prove to the people, uh, to the Cambodia, to the international community that this is a court that he's not, he doesn't control, he does not have control of, he has to let the court proceed. And the proceedings will have, the court will have to uh, order the government to provide us the entry, whether with an American passport or with the Cambodian passport. We have to be present at our trial. That's number one. So number two is that um, if we are not allowed in, how can you justify the to uh, to the Cambodian community or to the international community that this is a a court a justice that is um, independent from the executive uh, branch? You can't. So Mr. Hun Sen will have it's the ball is in his court. The ball is in his court, and he will let you in. Um, and I think as from the past example, uh, when you demand 12 cents and he made you pay for uh, for $1,100, um, for us as observer, we concerned that you may not walking out of that court free. That's fine. Uh, in that case, if, if that yeah. the case, that ha what happened then? You know, so but as a Democrat, yeah, Oh, as a human being with dignity, you have to defend yourself. If we were not like the first, the first uh, case when I went to court again. Oh, in fact, I sued Mr. Hun Sen. If we were not, the court is the only mechanism that you walk in to the to just to to, to tell the truth. The truth is within, is here. Not what the judges say, not what Mr. Hun Sen say, what not, what, whoever says whatever they want to say. Doesn't matter, here. But my heart, from my conscience, I can stand in front of any court and free my conscience. And I will continue to speak as a Democrat. I will continue to defend justice, justice not for me, it's like the first time, not for me, but for the women of Cambodia, because he Mr. Hun Sen insulted me, meaning he insulted all the women in the whole uh, Cambodia. And this time he's taking us opposition to court. At the same time, he's putting our members in jail. They are, they are arrested, they are detained, they are assaulted anytime, any day. Any hour of the day, any day of the week, how can we justify as leaders that, that we, we can still we remain outside? No, we have to go inside and face that those judges and look at those judges right in the eye and say, Your Honor, you took the oath to serve justice to deliver justice. So may justice be delivered to me, for me, not for me, but for the people of Cambodia. And as I know, um, over a hundred people who have been summoned mostly were the uh, CNRP uh, member. Uh, however, this case also involved another Cambodian a prominent Cambodian American figure uh, who we have been following uh, is a civil rights lawyer, Terry Sang. Um, and uh, we have been speaking with her uh, earlier that um, how much the ad hoc uh, and uh, civil society have been effectively silent, uh, silencing in Cambodia. And uh, in the last, uh, it just in the last uh, recent months, uh, Cambodia also have released uh, a couple law, the cyber law, and another one the, which uh, 
prohibit women dress in a certain way. Um, from uh, your observation, can you um, can you tell that the direction of Cambodia where it's heading now is is this um, going toward extreme dictatorship, uh, preparing to shut down the country? Is this um, how what um, what what is your comment? It is very clear and is such a danger of Cambodia our nation, a peaceful nation, a rich nation, the 16 million Cambodian people are being dragged into a big hole. And that hole is dug by Mr. Hun Sen. He only concern is his power and the who will succeed him after he he's gone. I don't know when he's he's gonna go because he says he's never gonna go, but he's putting his he's already grooming his eldest son to take his place. Fine, groom whoever you want to groom, but let there be free fair, genuine elections. Let the people of Cambodia make their, de their decision. Yeah, that's why we are, we have Cambo uh, CNRP, the Cambodian National Rescue Party has maintained its stance on and its principles very clearly. We are Democrats. We have democratic values that we have to defend. And we have proven election after election for the past 20 so years that the people are with us. We have never lost votes, uh, seats in parliament. We have always gained seats at every election. Why? Because the people be have become very informed of what are their rights and they can express their rights at election time because for the rest of the time they are too fear they live in fear but election they know that the vote is their vote no one will know who they vote for until 2018 where this election at the past election Many people did uh, wanted to boycott the election. Even they could not even boycott the election. They were dragged into the polling stations. It is this is how um, unreal it is. However, our solution has always been the principles that we have, wishing nothing more for Cambodia, but democracy, rule of law, human rights and nothing more for Cambodia than national unity and national reconciliation. And by going back to my trial, it's also saying, let's all be home. Be at the same table, let's talk national unity. Uh, on that note, what is your plan uh, to work with uh, party leader Kamsuka, uh, who's under house arrest, uh, he has been silent during all these years. You must understand the situation he is in. And just recently, uh, last week, he said he finally uh, broke his silence and said, I am not completely a free man. He had always kept silent. And we respect him. Mr. Kemsoka is the president of the CNRP. We have never denied that. In our hearts and in all the actions that we have taken in the past three years when I, from exile, don't forget we are in exile. Yeah, how you know how difficult it is to, 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 to fight from abroad. Um, but Mr. Kemsoka is our president, Mr. Som Every word that Mr. Kamsukha puts out gives us hope. And he is very, he is the, the president that we have always uh, respected. Yeah. And 
four Mr. Kim Sok Ha, even Cambodian Americans, Cambodian overseas have joined the campaign to free Kim Sok Ha. How many, how many demonstrations, how many <laughs> protests have we conducted to free Kim Sok Ha? That we are very clear about what the country needs, what the country wants, what the people want. It seems to me it has been a few confusing and rather contradicting years since the arrest of Kamsukha and member of CNRP became a living exile like yourself, prominent, prominent leaders. Uh, why Kamsukha is under house arrest uh, and not allowing to speak or doing any politics. Uh, yet we had member outside actively working, advocating uh, for CNRP uh, to continue to have activity. Uh, some interpreted it as because of this action, they uh, it makes Hun Sen keep uh, Kamsukha under the arrest even tighter on his neck. Um, what do you have to say to that? Is that uh, is this uh, do they put two chicken uh, together and fight ourselves? Or is, or it, <laughs> I don't quite understand uh, the cause and the effect, but many people have I have have heard analysts and words around that because of this action, it made Kamsuka couldn't really be free because of what we're doing outside. Um, what is really the true problem here? that is the reasoning then you ask yourself you have we have to ask ourselves why are we giving Hun Sen uh, a good reason to keep Mr. Kamsoka? why are we giving playing in the hand of Mr. O -O -O of Hun Sen so you are just if we're trying to justify for Hun Sen he kept, he, he totally, totally violates the constitution. He totally violates our human rights. He totally violates not just us, the whole country. We have over half of, half of the country with CNRP. And he took away our president and we have to keep silent. And if we, if we make any noise, don't, he be careful. He's gonna keep our president for life. Is that how you fight? For your president to come out and you know the court is in his hand he can leave he can keep our president forever for whatever for how long he wants whether you make one noise or not and how can you stand right here for the past three years stand to see our president in jail and do nothing we cannot then it's not just our president in jail our members, our supporters are also in jail. How can you leave the country? How can you be inside the country and do nothing, say nothing because you live in fear? You are uh, under the, the power of unsaid. How can then, the, how can the people uh, have confidence and have trust and have hope in you? If you say nothing, you do nothing. No, we have chosen with all Full respect, and Mr. Kamsokha is always our president. President Mr. Samrangsi is not acting, acting. He's just acting. We need a leader. I'm a vice president. I'm not a president. We have other vice presidents. We, Mr. Kamsokha is still a president, and we have to have an acting president. And Mr. Samrangsi has dedicated his entire life fighting for justice for democracy in Cambodia. He has a place, he to a role to play. He is a moral authority, not just for CNRP, but for the people of Cambodia as well. You cannot eliminate Democrats. No, you cannot deny our right to speak and you cannot undermine the efforts of Cambodian all over the world to keep fighting. And what's the result now? CNRP is alive. And with the new administration, President uh, Biden, uh, what do you hope for this January 2021 to come? We have not just we, um, me or Cambodia, 
I think the whole world is looking at America to this time uh, for the next five years as an America that used to be. And President-elect Joe Biden said it very clearly, America is back as the beacon of democracy. The one of the leaders, not the leader, but one of the leaders of, in, in the democratic world that can put the value, human value, human dignity, human rights first. Not this country first, that country first, no. Human rights democracy on the global, at the global level, and whether it is in trade, whether in the foreign affairs, whether it is um, sec national security, world security, human rights first, dignity of your own people and the people of the world. And the, that's how you maintain, how, the, how you protect democracy from dictatorship, from uh, populist um, uh, leaders, from um, a one party state. Democrats have not, uh, I mean, I'm not talking about just Democrats in America, I mean Democrats in the whole, uh, the full sense of the word, um, with, Amer with America leading countries in Europe, um, in Asia, in Africa, all speaking with one voice. And that's how you defend, you protect your uh, the democracies against dictatorship. And don't forget, you have the influence, you have the presence of China in the whole world as well. I was going next with China. <laughs> so you lure me right into it. Um, the concern with China, uh, as the entire country in Cambodia was flood, half the country was flood under the water, our king poured in China for two weeks. At first, I thought he visited China because under the state of emergency, the uncertainty of relationship with Prime Minister Hun Sen made our king spend his time in exile. But then I thought maybe I was wrong because after his return, uh, Princess Arun Resmi Noradam was appointed as Deputy Prime Minister. Can you explain like how how this uh, could legitimate, legitimate Hun Sen's government uh, with this appointment a royal family? Does this uh, make the opposition party the opportunity to have opposition party to help balance Cambodia politics become weaker? Or, um, what, you know, someone, we must put the interest of the country first. We must put the dignity and the human rights of our people first. That's totally, totally the, the most important thing in helping Cambodia, pushing Cambodia forward. Cambodia is stuck. When you are stuck as a country, you are weak. When you are weak, then other countries that the superpower will use you. This is not about one person. This is a whole nation will invade your, your country, whether economically or militarily speaking, you are vulnerable. That's why together we must stand to defend our country. It is not about this party or that party. And you know, I used to be a member of the Royalist Party and I left that party. Yeah, I left the party because uh, I need to speak to, the, to, to say the truth when our people are suffering and you can't speak the truth the party won't let you speak the truth because it's not the interest of the people first but the personal interest of the party leader or members of the part of your own of that party you cannot stay in with that party you have to leave 
when I left, I left my my uh, position so as Minister for Women's Affairs. Right, you serve as a Minister for Women and Veterans Affairs from yeah. uh, 2000, from 1998 to 2004, uh, yeah. under, in coalition government, Hun San government mm -hmm. with Hun Sampek. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, I see uh, that record that you left um, due to corruption that you saw. And, um, and look, this party, Hun Sampek party is now down to zero, zero seat from the being a ruling party, the party that the people voted for, had hoped for in 1993 at the UN election. We had, Fonsi had it all, and now today lost it all. When you lose your soul, the people know, people are not gonna continue with a party that has no soul. I will mention Vietnam next because we always have aggressive neighbors. Um, it seems to me that the beginning of this um, mass trial, treason trial, prior to that, it began with uh, Rong Chun, union leaders uh, who went to visit the border and, and because villagers claim they lost lands and there were site of Vietnam moved their border into Cambodia land. Um, uh, subsequently, he posed, made a posting on Facebook and they arrested him uh, for violating the law, for not following the protocol, or going to upper reporting such as such as such put made it a public. Um, to me, immediately from a democratic country living like the US, uh, if somebody has a, an issue about a border and post anywhere, the first response the government will have responsibility to respond is to answer, not to arrest. That would be a democratic uh, process in respecting human rights. But that not, was not the case with Mr. Rong Chun. Subsequently, well, a, few, uh, a few protests broke out, including some of other smaller uh, civil societies such as Modern Nature. And uh, thousands of more people have been arrested in following uh, Mr. Rong Chun. And within a month after, another over 100 people have been uh, ordered uh, to, to stand trial for treason. So I, I think at this time when what happened with Mr. Rong Chun, people were really sensitive about that border issue and it was such a sensational issue. Now it came to this and do you, are you, uh, do you see it as he playing uh, some kind of a trick to draw away the attention and while giving away land to Vietnam quietly? Listen, the uh, border issue with Vietnam will all, has always been and will always be an issue until Cambodia can stand on its own. We, in a period of peace under King, former King Nordam Sihanouk, we were able to defend our, our nation. There, were, there was a short moment of peace. And then now that after the Khmer Rouge, you know, the, the history, um, Hun Sen is, is in power because he has was, he's put in power in his position by the Vietnamese. Therefore, he will always have to pay back those, the favor or the debt to the Vietnamese. And how does he pay it back? With the land of the people. This is not just farmland. This is Cambodia the land of the people of, of your nation. How do you define a leader who gives away his, his own land to the, neighbor, to, to the neighbor country? Yeah? No, you will never, never, never be able, no matter which leader you are, who, whoever you are, you will never be able to silence a Cambodian, a Khmer, from talking about the border issue 
between any border, especially the border between uh, with, with Vietnam. Never. Mr. Hun uh, Rong Chun has always been very critical, very vigilant in, 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 in fact. And we, our member of parliament, Mr. Um Sung An, was in jail for, and uh, our senator, Mr. Hong Sok Ho, was also in jail for speaking up, for going straight to where the trouble is, where our fair farmers are saying, where our, our people are saying, this, this used to be our ancestral land. And this is now part of Vietnam. And we are in jail. This will, that's why it is so, so, so necessary for us to go back as, and, and then be part of the election in 2023. And that's why um, our on the road map to national unity, to a free, free Cambodia. We do have a roadmap. We do have recommendations. We do have a, propo a proposal for peace, for real peace. Can you tell me a little more about this roadmap and the plan for peace? Because 2023 is coming very soon and you cannot possibly organize for an election in such a short time uh, if waiting for the banning period to end in 2022 because it start in at the, at the end of the 2022 that's only and they this, the ban start in november 2017 that would leaving only one month uh, uh be, before turning 23 and the election is in june that six months before the election um, so what is I, I uh, what I think this roadmap you mentioned is critical. What can you share with the audience? First, starting 2021, we have to start with a, a new a new approach from our side, from CNRP. And that new approach is our return, a return that is symbolic of um the steps for national re national reconciliation yeah mr samnancy is not returning at this moment at this moment i go first so that the pressure the tension between mr samnancy and mr S mr hun sen can be um put aside i as a woman i will be uh, more flexible and I go for for the trial. And if you, if I am found guilty, take me, take me. But take me in a sense that Mr. Hun Sen has proven something. Okay, fine. But let's move on to a national, to Cambodian, the Khmer people talking, speaking. At the, around the, on the what issue? The issue that CNRP is concerned of, is concerned about what Hun Sen side is concerned about, who, what that the people are concerned about. Let's put it at the same table. If we all are concerned about the national, the interests of our nation, the full, and then we want to go sincerely, sincerely. And we want to believe that there is such a a um, a roadmap that we're not calling for a political um, dialogue. We're not calling for a political resolution. We are calling for a national dialogue and national resolution. And then after that. Um, and we have our people have to be engaged. Cambodian Americans have Cambodian overseas have to be engaged. Yeah, it's not about two men, two parties them fighting or negotiating or dialoguing for their own interests. No, no gains made until Cambodia is free and back, put on back on the democratic path. And after that paving the way for the local elections in 2022 and 2023, an election that can be considered as free and fair. 
and we are call, we call on and this is where the, the role of the united states is important we call on all democratic countries governments who have signed who are signatories of the paris peace of four to join in with us in this national uh, dialogue be observers be uh, moderators so that we can really start talking about a Cambodia that is free. Our people have suffered enough. And that's why Mr. Samnansi is taking a lot, of, a lot of steps back so that there will be the tension between the two men would, would, would um, be put aside. It's not just tension, uh, the tension with uh, two men. I know you uh, people would be happy to hear that 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 you mentioned uh, Komsuka always our president. I think that's the key. Um, uh, however, some followers see it. The tension is not just between Mr. Sam Rengzi and Mr. Hun Sen, but between Mr. Komsuka and Mr. Sam Rengzi as well. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Um, because they, they, they have no, they have not spoken with each other for three years. <laughs> How can there be tension, right? We may have some differences in our strategy. That's that's for cl that's clear, and we let the people judge. We have been active. We have been nonviolent, but we have be, we have not been passive. We have adopted the nonviolence active activism. Because we are outside, we can speak. How can you I justify yourself being outside and not speak? And why did I why did I leave? Why did we leave? So that we can speak. Well, um, that's one full round. And uh, I really appreciate that you uh, spoke passionately on an answer to all my questions. Um, and um, I hope that that answer to some curiosity to our audience as well. And I wish you a safe journey back on January 4th among with uh, your leadership team. And um, thank, you. thank you so much being with the, me today. Uh, and uh, I look forward to speak with you again soon. Uh, hopefully next time we do it in Khmer. Yes. Yes, and my sincere appeal to all my people inside and outside is that the only way we can save our nation is to put the country first, no matter where you are, who you are. And from my, the bottom of my heart, I wish to express my gratitude to all Khmer's outside of Cambodia who have never ever forgotten Chit Yung, our nation. Thank you, Subban, like yourself. Thank like Khmer you. Post USA. Thank you again uh, for your time and the honor of speaking with you today. And Thank you. I bid you farewell. <laughs> 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 <laughs>